weeks to finish our quest. Standing in one of the oldest first railroads in Texas. Uh, this is actually a spur that was built later off of it, but we're in Harrisburg, Texas. I'm Jackson Burns, I'm the Redneck Archaeologist. Project Excalibur is now in full swing. We're here at the San Jacinto Battleground today. I'm sitting here on a replica of one of the Twin Sisters. Twin Sisters were two cannons donated to the Republic of Texas by the people of Cincinnati, Ohio. And these are only replicas because nobody's sure exactly what they look like. Cannons are called the Twin Sisters because when Dr. Rice smuggled them down from Cincinnati because the United States was neutral and didn't want to become part of the Texas, or didn't support the Texas Revolution, they smuggled them down the Mississippi into New Orleans and then from New Orleans they were transported to another ship and brought into Galveston Bay. They only made it here about three or four days before the battle so they didn't have any cannonballs for them. So what they had to use is what's called grape shot. They took musket balls, pieces of chain, broken glass and that gave them about a 200 yard range which was enough to, uh, to scare the uh, the Mexicans whenever they started firing it's like two big old shotguns you know just blast a bunch of stuff out there and people started falling you know and whenever they were at the Port of Galveston they got the names because they came with his two daughters Eleanor and Elizabeth so they had the twin sisters Eleanor and Elizabeth and the twin sister cannons and they only made it to the battleground about three or four days before behind me is one of the oldest cemeteries in Texas it was first built in 1820 the first grave was in 1820s 1830s More info on this is Bendale Cemetery, Harrisburg, Texas. wall here that runs all the way up. It's about uh, a yard on the other side of the chain link fence. Bear that in mind when we go to our uh, relationship extrapolations on the uh, various uh, hints that we've looked at. What did you say? Uh, I don't know. Relationship extrapolation. I think he's talking about a relationship with a goat or something. <laughs> no, that's yours. You're the goat raider around here. The goat raider. <laughs> the goat raider. J Bob. The goat raider. <laughs> 
Okay. That sounded too real. Structural, structural uh, relationship. Okay, you notice here that when they built this fence in here, they cheated a little bit this way. But, like I said, it's about a yard inside. Now it goes all the way down and makes an angle off down at the end and runs down the fence for a little while on that end. That tells me that was put up to keep the rain and erosion down, uh, uh, you know, so because this is a lower area. But, uh, yeah, you can see how it breaks down right there. So that's your low lying area. Now, so if, talking about if it's on this side, if it's, if it's on this side. Right, on that side of the concrete barricade. These people are never, without a court order, going to let us walk on that side. It's going to be risky. Now, you can see how it lays right there. There's a low-lying area right there. This is a continuation of the low-lying area that went all the way up to the, the bayou or thereabouts. Well, last time we were out here looking, we were looking for some Cena trees. Because that was one of the things that they said that they buried the cannons near some Cena trees. And we looked all around the whole area uh, on all of our other times, and we never found any cedar trees. When we came out here, we found one right there. It's the only one we've seen in the whole area, and they are, you know, that's a native tree. It's like, you know, the only one around here, so we must be getting close or something. This is what's called the Cena tree or the coffee bean tree. Four people, Confederates, whatnot, uh, during the Civil War especially, because they didn't have much in supplies and coffee beans because of the embargoes of the Yankees, would take these seeds and boil them up and make what they call coffee. Or a different, there's a different word for it. We'll go into that. Cena tree. It's also known as a Cena tree. S E N N A, I believe it is. Um, anyhow, whenever they were burying the twin sisters, one of the men, uh, I think it was Barnett that said it. I'm not sure which one it was, but. Uh, one of the men said that they uh, buried it in the a low-lying area, basically, or pretty close to it, uh, in a stand, strand of cena trees. And so these things usually grow where it's kind of a low-lying area, and uh, they grow really well in that. And so that's what we were looking for out there, and we did find one at the uh, Glendale Cemetery location on the other side of the road. Right the side of the tree. That, does, that means that they did grow along that uh, creek there. But that whole area down there was probably full of them. One of the things about it is, is if that creek, if they did cross that creek, bayou, little bayou, whatever it is, it goes up to, through the low lying area up to the buffalo bayou, uh, then the question would be is if they buried it on the far side of it to hide the smoke from when they buried the carriages. Um, the caissons from uh, to hide the smoke from the Yankees that were in the area and that was what the thought was that could very well be that's about the only place other than where we originally looked uh, to me that makes more sense uh, it all depends on when that 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 fence was built but I found out it might not have been built until after the 1860s so I'm not sure about when that 19 mile fence was built and then, of course, we still have to worry about where they found the twin sisters when they got off the train.